Hey everyone, Nico here, and today we have something extra special. For this 5-Minute Friday, I asked a very talented astrophotographer from Brazil named Olga Itzmael uh, to tell us about the best untracked targets for the Southern Hemisphere. And for those unfamiliar with the term untracked, it just means astrophotography without a star tracker. So for these photos she's gonna show you, Olga just used a stock DSLR and normal photography lenses on a tripod. I discovered Olga's work on Instagram where she not only posts her finished photos but also shares through her stories progress on her astrophotography projects like a DIY roll-off roof observatory she built in her yard. And you can also follow her on Astrobin to see the photos in higher quality. All the links will be in the description. And with that, I'll turn it over to Olga. Hi guys! My name is Olga and I'm a 16-year-old astrophotographer from Brazil. I live about 20 degrees south of the equator and I'm here today to share some of my images that I made without a tracking mode. That's also called as untracked astrophotography. First, to achieve any of the results I'm going to show here, you will need dark skies. And I would say that imaging anything without narrowband filters on heavily light polluted places is a very hard task. You will need hours of exposure to compensate for the low signal amount and in the end, you won't be able to record some of the nebulosity that was actually in there. Even if you stack a million exposures of something that was registered by your camera sensors as zero, zero times ten is zero, and zero times a million is still zero, so it's not worth the try. I love to see people just ignoring this advice and trying to do and track it as a photography on heavily light polluted places. I haven't seen many people doing that. You can just stack a lot of frames to reveal those pixels that were registered as one. The first image I'm going to show here is a single frame of the Milky Way galaxy passing by the zenith. You can just frame with Scorpios in the same place and it will be just as great. You can use this lens, the 1855mm or the 15mm f1.8. The best part, you don't even need a DSLR to capture a shot like this. You can just use your phone. It's a pretty simple task. You can even stack those frames and do like and track it as photography with your phone. The best time of the year to photograph it, it's from May until August, so it's pretty much the best time of the year because you will have winter and all of the winter constellations. It's cold, so your camera sensor will get colder. This means less noise, more signal. And here in the south, the Milky Way goes right into the zenith. One of the best things you can ever see in life. Even if you're not an astrophotographer, you will just admire a lot of the Milky Way going right into the zenith. Having said that, the next target is the Southern Cross until Alpha Centauri. Again, a single frame taken with some clouds passing by. If you take your time to stack the Coalsack Nebula, which stays at the Crux constellation, you will have a magnificent result. The Coalsack Nebula contrasts very well with the Milky Way in the background. It is one of the easiest targets that you can photograph in the southern hemisphere. I would suggest you to use the 1855mm lens, step it down at 35mm, like this. There's no need of fully open optics, as this object is very huge and bright, so you can just step down if you have some issues with your lenses. And the best part, you can even increase your exposure time as you're aiming something that's near the poles. For untracked as photography, if you're familiar with it, it's one of the most important things to do. Increase your exposure and you're going to solve 90% of your problems. This way, if you're imaging with 6 seconds when pointing at something near the equator, you can just increase the time for 10 or 12 seconds when using a, a 50mm lens, or even more if you're using a wider lens. You can avoid frames registered as zero and just make your image a better quality. Check out this graphic I made. It shows the relationship between exposure time and declination. You must try to use the lower focal length you can, because this way you can increase your exposure time and just makes things way better. So let's jump to the next one, the Carina Nebula. It is one of the brightest objects in the whole sky, and it is definitely the brightest emission nebula. It sits closely to the Southern Cross and you can frame them together with the 50mm lens and you can also just use a longer focal length to reveal some details and some colors as this nebula is very bright and you can just try to get some of the details like the K-hole nebula and design the cores. This shot was made with this lens, the 75-300mm and step it down at 200 millimeters, so this way you can... I use it 2.5 seconds to image it, and 
in the end it was actually a pretty nice result because I had really pinpoint stars. There is also no need for a modified camera as I still use a stock camera until today, even if a, with a tracking device. You will not notice so much difference. The cord with a stock camera is going to be blue and with a modified camera it's going to be red. You're probably not going to get anything else than just the core. The last target, and in my opinion, the best target ever to image in the Southern Hemisphere without a tracking device, is the Large Magellanic Cloud. It's also the biggest galaxy visible to the naked eye here in a border three to four skies. You can see it and it looks like a cloud just passing by. I would try to image with the 15 millimeters f1.8 lens. And as always, you can increase your exposure time when you're aiming at something that stays near the poles. You can just try to use 10 seconds exposures with a crop sensor DSLR and a 15 millimeters lens, and you're going to rock it. You can even try the small Magellanic cloud, which is a, another beautiful target, and it's very bright. Well, so that's it. I would like to thank Nico for the opportunity of sh showing some stuff here. I would love to see people just trying to do more of untracked photography, as we know, Astrophotography is very expensive and this is a, just a magnificent way of starting and you have a lot of fun memories with it. You should remember that a simple setup is not a limitation, but rather a way of exploring your limits and just trying to do your best. You can even discover new things and just extrapolate some of the concepts that we know in this hobby. This is what makes astrophotography something you can find anywhere else. Clear skies for all!